Remember for Lumio, as the teacher, you're going to access it from Google Drive. Once in Google Drive, you'll go to the New button, down to More, and then over to Lumio. Lumio will open in a different tab. Once on the Lumio screen, you'll go down to Teacher Sign-In at the bottom, and you're going to sign in with Google. Once in Lumio, you'll see all of your projects in the center of the screen. At the very top, you're going to see the My Library tab along with the Lumio Library tab. Lumio Library is where we're going to find our digital activities. Once in the Lumio Library, you'll see that you can search for resources using the search bar. You can also search by grade level and by subject. Let's say I'm working on a unit on fractions and I want it to be for my fourth grade class. I can also narrow down by the math subject and then press on the magnifying glass. You'll see that all of my options come up in the center of my screen. And now on the left hand side, I have those filters that I set. I also now see that there are some standards that I can search by. To view an assignment or activity in Lumio, you simply need to click on the preview. From here, you're going to see a preview of all of the slides in the Lumio slideshow. Using these arrows, you can click through each of the slides and get a preview of what you and the students will be doing. You'll also notice that on top of the slides in preview, there is a little icon based on whether or not there are videos or interactives. For example, on this next slide, there is the label Reveal It Interactive. If I want to see that as the teacher, I can click on See It, and then I'm able to interact with it the way the students would. I also see the YouTube symbol on the next slide, and so I know when I click on that, I'm going to be seeing a video. The great thing about Lumio is that you can embed YouTube videos even for your elementary students and it will be safe without ads. I also see that this Lumio lesson has included a fill in the blank and again if I press see it I'm going to be able to use the drag and drop features just like I did as a student would. I can check the answers and once I see that I'm wrong I can make any changes. This allows for students to self-check their work. I can continue viewing all of the pages of this lesson and playing all of the different games that it has included. If I like this lesson, I'm going to click on Save to My Library. You'll see at the bottom that it's processing. When the import to your library is complete, you will see two options here. You can start the lesson right from this screen, or you can edit it. And since we want to make some customizations, we're going to select the Edit button. You can also edit any of your Lumio lessons by hovering over the top of the icon and clicking on the Edit button from your library. When you go to edit mode, you're going to see a preview of all of your slides, similar to if you were in a Google Slideshow. It also is going to give you some hints as you work through your lesson. Going across the top, you'll see that we have the mouse tool. We also have the ability to add a text box if we wanted to add some additional information on here. We also have the equation maker which allows you to use all of the symbols and equations for math as well as chemistry. We also have the ability to add different shapes 
lines and images, which can be searched or can be uploaded. Finally, we can add web link. Which will hyperlink students to other pages on the web. As we go through the lesson, you can see that when we click on each of the slides, we can create a new blank page, we can duplicate the page that is currently selected, or we can delete the page if we don't think it is necessary. New blank page will allow us to add our own customized content on a blank page. Again, using the top tools, we can make edits to our slides. I'm just selecting, clicking and dragging, and I have options to change the color and size once it's on my slide. I can continue making edits throughout the lesson so that it fits my needs. When I get to an activity that has already been loaded, you'll see when I select it that I get the prompt to change the activity. I can edit the activity at the top using a little pencil, and this allows me to change what's in the activity or the directions that go along with it. I also have the ability to preview it like I did before. When I click on edit this activity for the fill in the blank, for example, you'll see that I'm now able to add additional sentences or change the words that are being used. To define the blanks, I click on define blanks and I select the word that I want to be one of my drag and drops. I also have the ability to have students check answers when prompted, instantly when they drag and drop, or to not check at all. I can also change the theme of my activities. So for this one, fill in the blank, I'm able to choose um, a blank sort of simple theme, underwater, monster, or science. I'm going to go with underwater. And you can see that that activity is still here, but with a different theme. I can preview the activity and drag and drop with what I have already done. You can do this with any of the activities that are previously added. Now, if I want to add an interactive to a lesson, I can simply click on this plus sign at the bottom of my edit screen. And you'll see that here I have now accessed where I can add my own material from a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF, or anything from my Google Drive. I can also add YouTube videos by clicking on this button here, which will allow me to search for videos. The plus sign is also the place where I can get all of those game-based activities and formative assessment response questions. I can even add graphic organizers and manipulatives. So maybe after they watch a video, I want them to be taking some Cornell notes. And you'll see that when I add that activity, it automatically imports it wherever my uh, slide was selected. So I can drag and drop and change the location of where I want this slide. And again, I can edit what's on here. If there is a locked item, I simply click on the lock and unlock it. And then I can change what's on the screen. Using the plus sign gives me a lot of ways that I can customize.
I can also make customizations on slides based on how I want the students to respond. So when I select a slide with the blue outline, we see two icons in the right hand corner that are also going to help us to make some customizations. The little talking head is where we can add instructional audio. And this is where I can record audio instructions for this page. It can be as simple as reading what's on the page so that students can hear it as well. I simply click on the start recording button. Students will be able to explain why fractions are equivalent as well as recognize and generate equivalent fractions. I'm able to listen to it back to continue recording from that spot, to delete it all together, or I can add it to this slide. You'll notice that now on the slide, the students will see the talking head icon. And when they click on it, they'll be able to hear what I just recorded. This is awesome if you are using this as a self-paced activity for students to work on independently. This is also just a great way to have to avoid repeating directions. And it's just an excellent accessibility feature for our English language learners and our students with um, accommodations. The other button that we see is the magic wand. And when you click on the magic wand, you're going to be able to change the activity. Individual handout is when a student is working on this page on their own. They will have all of the tools that they need to complete an assignment independ independently. You can also change the activity to a gr group workspace. And what this means is that you will be able to assign groups while the lesson is live and assort the students into groups to work on this same slide together. If I've changed it and want to change it back, I'm simply going to go to Edit Activity and I'll get the magic wand again. The last option I have is Whole Class Whiteboard. And this is exactly that. It means the entire class will be able to edit this page at the same time. So be careful using this one because that can be quite a few people on the same page. You may want to use this for things like taking a poll or a survey, um, simple activities like that. Most of the time, if you are converting the page from a static page that students are viewing to an activity, you will typically use individual handout so that students can all work on their own copy of that page. When you are done editing, you're going to go to the finish editing button in the upper left corner. From here, as you hover over the activity, you can start it live and it will take you to your uh, live presentation. This is where by clicking on the little people, you can uh, give your students their class ID. This class ID number is how they get into this activity with you. You can also copy this link to put it into your Brightspace for students to access. Now students would have to type this in when they click on the Lumio app on class link or they can click on the link from Brightspace. You will also see with that people tab that you are now in the teacher paced mode, which means as you progress through the lessons, the students will see the same things on their screen, but you can certainly change it to student paced where students can work on it on their own time. I also have the ability on the fly to change this page to one of those three types of handouts or activities. So I can make this an individual activity while I'm in the lesson teaching. I don't have to do it beforehand. Same with the group workspace. Here you see that this is how they will sort the names and you can drag and drop them to different groups and the whole class whiteboard. I'm also able to use my tools here while I am presenting with students to point out important information or type things as I go. And I will progress through the lesson using these arrows at the bottom left hand side of the page. When I'm finished my lesson I'm going to go to the three dashes and I'm going to go to end lesson. This is also a place where I can edit it, share this lesson, or make a copy of it. In the Your Turn portion of this assignment, you're going to explore the Lumio library. You're going to look through the resources to find something that fits your content and grade level. If you don't have anything in mind to search, 
You can also scroll through some of the featured items, which are based on current events. And you can browse the different collections that have been curated with teachers in mind. Some of the ones that we really enjoy is the mental wellness options as well as some of the STEAM options that have been created for Lumio. As you scroll down, you'll see that many of the lessons are categorized by topics such as reading and writing and multiplication. You will also see that some of them are sponsored by different publishers, such as the reading section that has been sponsored by Epic, as well as ReadWorks. Additionally, there are cultural arts options through the art and music section. And then if you just want a blank template to create your own lesson, you can see some of those page templates here. Remember, you can also upload all of your own slides and turn them into a Lumio as well.